Hey guys, welcome back to the video. My name is Ruben and I'm doing a week by week series of my flight training. Today we are on week 12. We actually just completed week 12. And this has probably been one of the biggest weeks throughout the whole program. One of the most accomplishing that I have felt. And pretty much why that is, is because I did all my solos. So in order for you to get your private pilot license, you have to do a, you have to have solo time. You have to have, I believe it's five hours of complete solo time. And yeah, this week I pretty much accomplished all of my solo time, which is huge because flying alone for the first time, I mean, it's pretty nerve wracking. So day one started with the solo that I filmed for you guys. If you guys didn't see my last video, I actually documented the whole process of um, me doing the complete solo, three takeoffs and three landings. So if you missed that, go watch the last video. So the day after that, they had me do the local solo, which was pretty much me going up north. It's about five to 10 miles up north and me kind of just doing some maneuvers alone. Uh, obviously staying out of specific air spaces and just me getting more comfortable being in the plane alone. And I actually did a power off stall in there alone. I was really scared to do any type of maneuver being in there kind of alone for the second time ever. Um, but after being up in the air for like an hour, I finally convinced myself, I was like, okay, let me get into slow flight and then do a power off stall. So. I, I did, I did, I think three power off stalls actually all by myself in the plane. So that felt good. And I'm getting a lot more comfortable in the plane, uh, alone, which is huge. And then the next day was probably the biggest day. And that was the cross country solo. And honestly, I wasn't super, I was nervous for the first solo. I'm not going to lie. And I was nervous for the local solo but the cross country solo was a whole different ball game. Like you're going far. If any of you guys know Arizona, you're going from Scottsdale airport all the way to Tucson and Tucson's far, like Tucson's really far. <laughs> it's actually, I believe it's like, I gotta look it up, but it's probably like 50 miles at least. Cause I believe for it to be a cross country, it has to be listed 50 miles or over. So it was a three point cross country. So I went to Tucson and then I went to Chandler and then I came back to Scottsdale and Chandler's a class of D airport as well. So it's a lot of communication and you realize at this point, you realize that dude, it's all on you. It's all communications all is on you. All preparing is on you. And one thing that I really learned from this is don't rush it. Some, um, in the aviation space, in flying a plane, you don't want to rush things. That is the last thing you want to do. Um, so take your time in preparing and if there's any delay, it's okay. It's better than you going up unprepared and then finding out that you forgot to get this, that, or whatever it might be. Some things that really, really helped me, I had my kneeboard and you really can't even do this flight, the cross country, if you don't have a kneeboard, it would just be super tough. So on my kneeboard, I written, I wrote down all of the frequencies here. It's really hard to memorize all the frequencies, especially this is still maybe my, maybe my 20th or 25th time flying, you know, and it's hard to memorize all the frequencies. So I wrote them down right here. And even if you have them memorized, write them down anyway, it doesn't hurt. Right. And then pretty much for every location I had written the like, uh, eight is all the frequencies where I'm going to be going to the runways. I kind of drew them out and I also had them printed in the plane. And then this top section here, like the here, I left it for me to write whatever notes I need to write as long as I go along the way. And I had my notepad here in the order that I'm going to be doing the trip. So first I was going to Tucson. So my first paper was 
Tucson. Actually, it was Phoenix because I had to go through class Bravo airspace. So I had Phoenix, then Tucson, then Chandler, then um, Scottsdale. So pretty much the second I was done with Phoenix airspace and doing all that, I ripped it off and now I have my next one. And then I ripped that one off and so on. Um, so that's how I went about it. I also wrote down the, I also wrote down the TPA, so traffic pattern altitude, and that really helps as well. It's just, when it's your first time flying cross country, it's very overwhelming because you're fully responsible of doing everything. And when you're doing at a low flight time, like let's say 40 hours, you're not super experienced, you know? So you might get anxious up there. You might get a little bit nervous. And I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit nervous. And when you're nervous, that's when you tend to make mistakes. So it's better to be over prepared. And like I was saying before with the delays, never rush things in aviation, is my flight was supposed to start at 8 a.m. I only took off maybe at like 9 or 9.30. And the reason why is because I had some questions for the instructor. So I got there early. I asked a bunch of questions. One thing I was kind of nervous for is the taxing. Like once I land, I wasn't scared about landing. I was more scared about like, okay, once I land, like where am I going to taxi to? Because I wasn't super familiar with Chandler's airport because I've actually only been there one time. But and Marana, I've only been there a few times. You don't wanna cross any lines that you're not supposed to, obviously. And you don't wanna get in trouble because um, you don't wanna get a phone number. So I didn't get a phone number, so that was all good. But yeah, that cross country is a big mountain to climb over. But once you get past it, like it's smooth sailing from there. And once I finished it up, it felt so good. Uh, it's very rewarding once you once you finally accomplish it. Honestly, flying solo, like I said in one of the previous videos, I'm not a huge fan of it, but maybe with me getting more solo time, I'll get uh, more comfortable and build that confidence that I need to be in that plane alone. I'm clearly good enough to fly the plane alone and safe, but you still, it's just, you just feel so much more safe when you have someone else by you, you know, and someone you could talk to the whole time. It's more comforting. Once I came back from the solos, I talked to like one of the head instructors there and they were saying how at this level in the training, this is where people typically break, you know? People really find out if they're meant for this around this stage when they have to do the cross country solo, it seems like that's where people either make it or break it type thing. But even if you can't do it at 40 hours or 50 hours, it doesn't matter. Getting your private pilot license doesn't have any limitations on it. You could get it at 100 hours or 150 hours. So even if you don't feel confident at 40 hours or 50 hours, it's okay, you know? Just build that time, build that confidence because eventually you will get it. I mean, it's not extremely hard. Yes, it is a little bit of a challenge and it is something, a mental hump that you need to get over, but it's not, you'll be able to do it. Yeah, like I was saying earlier, just be prepared. The more prepared you are, the better. And yeah, that's pretty much it for week 12. This is probably one of the biggest weeks in the whole program and one of the most the biggest mountain that you kind of have to climb over in private pilot um, for your private pilot license. But yeah, and for motivation for this week, a quote from Alex Hermosi. And I really like him. I actually been listening to a lot of his podcasts recently. Uh, he, he's a cool guy. Um, he said this in one of his podcasts, which totally goes on right in line with this week's this week's video. Um, fear is a mile wide, but an inch deep. And think about like, you see water everywhere around you, right? And you take a step and you, well, you're perceived that it's super deep, right? But once you take a step into it and realize it's an inch deep, 
you're like, oh, this is, isn't that bad. So fear is a mile wide, but an inch deep. And that's totally how I felt with this cross country. Is I'm, I was so scared to go into it. I was like, dude, I don't know if I'm ready. Like, at that, like when people say they're, not, they're never ready for their solo, I felt that big time for that cross country. But once I stepped into it and got into that plane and realized, okay, this is what I got to do to get through Class B airspace. This is what I got to do to get to Tucson. This is what I got to do to leave Tucson to go here. Once you're prepared and once you set yourself up for success in that way, you realize that it is just an inch deep and you realize that it isn't that bad and that way you have overcome this huge obstacle and that's where reward comes into play. If there was no fear or no risk involved, there would be no reward. There would be no satisfaction from it. So fear might be a mile wide but an inch deep, but you gotta be confident and you gotta be willing to take that leap of faith and be confident. Obviously, don't be stupid. If you know you're not ready, then yeah, say something. But be prepared. Prepare yourself and yeah, take that leap of faith because once you do climb over that mountain, once you do take a step and realize that, oh, it is just an inch deep, it's not bad, man. And uh, you're going to be, you're going to feel, you will reap the reward of taking that risk. So Yes, that's the motivation for this week. Thank you guys so much for watching week 12. And thank you guys so much for the support in that last video. I'll see you guys in week 13. I'm actually about to head out to the school right now. Peace.